welcome to the online earthquake engineering classes uh, dear students uh, in this particular class i am going to explain about uh, earthquake design earthquake resistant design philosophy what earthquake resistant design philosophy okay let us see the slides here uh, apart from the gravity loads the structure will experience dominant lateral forces of considerable magnitude during the earthquake shaking here what the sentence says is apart from the gravity load on the building not only gravity loads are acting at the time of earthquakes earthquake loads are also going to act on that particular building for that reason we have to consider the earthquake loads also that is the lateral forces of considerable magnitude during earthquake shaking Uh, lateral forces of a considerable magnitude during earthquake shaking will also there on that particular structure okay and it is essential to estimate and specify these lateral forces on the structure in order to design the structure to resist an earthquake and okay? it means it is essential to estimate the and specify these lateral forces on the structure in order to design the structure to resist an earthquake okay and it is impossible to exactly determine the earthquake it is impossible to exactly determine the earthquake induced lateral forces that are expected to act on the structure during its lifetime okay here uh, It's, uh, it says it is impossible to exactly determine the earthquake induced lateral forces we cannot predict the earthquake and it is it is impossible to exactly determine that particular lateral forces earthquake induced lateral forces next however considering the consequ consequential effects of earthquake due to eventual failure of the structure it is important to estimate these forces in a rational and realistic manner we need to estimate it is important to estimate the these uh, lateral forces in rational and realistic manner the earthquake forces in the structure depends on the number of factors such as it depends on the characteristics of earthquake what all are these characteristics means here you can see magnitude intensity duration and frequency these are the characteristics of earthquake and earthquake forces in the that particular structure depends on these characteristics that is magnitude intensity duration and frequency next it is also depends on the distance from the fault distance from the fault of that particular distance of the structure from the fault it means uh, wherever the rock falls faults are there that particular distance from the fault to the your uh, building wherever your building or uh, your structure is located the distance is going to matter here and site geology geology means geological features of that particular area or a geological features of that particular uh, site next comes is uh, type of structure type of structure and its lateral load resisting system this is it is again uh, considering with which type of structure it is whether it is rcc structure whether it is steel structure like that which type of structure we are going to design coming to earthquake resistant design philosophy here apart from the factors mentioned above the consequences of the of failure of the structure may also be concerned in the reliable estimation of design lateral forces um, and hence it is important to include these factors in the lateral force estimation procedures 
means uh, we, we shall discuss this lateral force uh, procedure and uh, dynamic analysis procedure later on here these uh, factors we need to consider in the uh, estimation of lateral force procedure the factors means uh, these factors characteristics of the earthquake distance from the fault and uh, site geology and uh, type of the structure we are going to consider okay here code of practice for earthquake resistant design of a structures primarily aims at accomplishing a two primary objectives uh, there are two primary objectives are there first one is total safety against the loss of life first one is total safety against the loss of life and minimizes the economic loss this code of practice minimizes the economic loss economic loss means if there is uh, no collapse of the building means uh, obviously it is minim it is going to minimize the economic loss and uh, there is no loss of life hmm? these are the the, uh, these objectives are fulfilled by design philosophy with the following criteria let us see the criteria for this earthquake resistant design philosophy the main criteria for this earthquake resistant design philosophy is there are total three criteria are there the first criteria is uh, resist a minor earthquake shaking without damage it means the building should resist a minor earthquake shaking the building should resist a minor earthquake shaking without any kind of damage hmm? the building should not experience even see even single crack or a even uh, even a small damage to that particular building if the minor earthquake shaking is there at uh, in case of minor earthquake shaking building should not experience any kind of damage to that particular building hmm? this is the first criteria in second criteria here uh, resist a moderate earthquake shaking without a structural damage but possibly with a some damage to a non structural members here you can see resist a moderate earthquake shaking it, in the second criteria it is it should resist the moderate earthquake shaking without structural damage here no structural damage no structural damage means it, it it should not cause any damage to the beams columns and footings and the slabs these are the structural members for these structural members the earthquake should not cause any of the damage but it can cause a damage to the some non structural members non structural members means if it is a frame structure there is a non structural members means masonry masonry the, the uh, cracks in the masonry is are allowed and some cracks in the plasters are allowed some non structural members the cracks and uh, damage to the non structural members is allowed in case of second criteria in earthquake design philosophy third criteria resist a major level of earthquake shaking with both structural and non structural damage but the building should not collapse thus endangerment of lives of occupants is avoided this criteria says here uh, if it is a major earthquake shaking at that point of time structural and non structural damage can be taken if it is a uh, structural damage and non structural damage also there it is okay but building should not collapse here here the collapse of the building should be avoided and uh, there should not be a loss of lives okay the third criteria says th there should not be collapse of the building if there is a damage to the structural members non structural members it is okay if there is a damage to the beams columns slabs it is okay but ultimately the building should not collapse this is the third criteria in earthquake resistant design philosophy let us see the picture here uh, this is uh, the diagram for minor shaking moderate shaking and strong shaking here 
here you can see the minor shaking minor shaking means uh, in the picture the first picture here uh, i am using the cursor to show you in the first picture uh, you can see there is no cracks or uh, the very minor cracks are there in at uh, the windows edges you can say but here no any kind of damage is not caused to this particular building in case of minor shaking huh? okay this is uh, for minor shaking uh, here in moderate shaking here you can see in the pictures there are many cracks in the masonry and but there is no damage to the beams and columns and the slabs there is no damage the beams and columns are not deflected here the the beams and columns are same same uh, as there in the uh, earlier position the beams and columns are in the same position okay the structural damage is not caused here in moderate shaking but in the strong shaking in the third criteria what happens the beams columns and the slabs are deflected here you can here you can sh uh, see the picture here the column this this column is deflected here i am showing the cursor this column is deflected and even this column is also deflected some and uh, this beam and this uh, sorry these two slabs are also deflected slabs or beams you can say and here uh, the more damage to the non structural elements is also there but ultimately the building has not collapsed here here you can see the building it is not collapsed it is standing still it is standing if it is deflected also if it is uh, damaged the building is damaged but it is not collapsed that is the uh, this uh, type of criteria we need to consider while designing okay the building should not collapse if it is having a damage it, it is okay okay uh, ultimately it should not collapse and it should uh, there should not be a lo lives uh, loss of lives okay on to the next slide here uh, uh, in earthquake resistant design philosophy the purpose of an earthquake resistant design to provide a structure with the features which will enable to respond satisfactorily to a seismic effects these features are related to five major objectives which are listed in order to in order of importance here uh, we shall see the those objectives the likelihood of collapse after very severe earthquake should be as low as possible means it should not collapse at all it should not collapse after the earthquake resistant design building if the building is designed as earthquake resistant it should not collapse only likelihood of collapse after very severe earthquake also it should not collapse it should it, it can it it, it is uh, okay if it is causing the damage to the structural as well as to the non structural parts okay mm, next coming to a non sorry uh, damage to a non structural elements caused by moderate earthquake should be kept within the reasonable level limits here in case of uh, moderate earthquakes damage to a non structural elements also should be kept in within the reasonable reasonable limits it should not cause more damage there also in case of moderate earthquake also it should not cause more damage that is also one of the objective although substantial damage to a severe earthquakes which have low probability of occurrence is acceptable such damage is unacceptable in case of moderate tremors which are more likely to occur which are more likely to occur it says uh, buildings in which many people are usually present should have deformity deformability features which will enable occupants to remain calm even in the event of strong shocks see here the more objective the buildings in which many people are usually present the buildings in which some more people are there at that at that building have deformability features which will enable occupants to remain calm and even uh, in the event of strong shock the the people should 
uh, people will remain calm if the there is an earthquake if it is not going to have more damage to that particular their structures okay the next personal injury should be avoided personal injury should be avoided this uh, one more criteria uh, sorry one more objective you can consider here the damage to the neighboring buildings should be avoided you are building from you the um, from your building the neighboring building should not be damaged that damage to the neighboring buildings should be avoided here this is one more objective okay this completes your earthquake design philosophy please go through this earthquake design philosophy thoroughly it is a very important concept uh, by saying this uh, again it is impossible to stop or predict earthquake as an engineers let us all unite to move forward and work for uh, reducing calamities due to natural and man-made hazards okay thank you okay this completes uh, earthquake design philosophy topics